Hi, in this episode I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut this Gloomhaven Hall of Fame. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is what I'm calling my Gloomhaven Hall of Fame. Now my family's been playing a single campaign of Gloomhaven. We started on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, so over three months at this point. One of the mechanics of Gloomhaven is that you play a character and when they achieve goals, you retire them. Now, I had a hard time taking these characters I had grown to love and putting them back in the box, so I made this display for them. The, this, uh, they're all part of a single party. The party is called the Black Saturday Party for when we started. And when you start a new character, it starts at a higher level than the old character, so that's why I've got this tiered look going on here. This is my first character down here, second, third, fourth, and I'm working on my fifth one right now, and it'll go right here. This is an entirely modular design. These boxes come apart and go back together. Um, uh, when I build a new box, I'll just put it right here. It'll light up just like the rest of them. Uh, it was cut on a laser cutter. The design was done in Adobe Illustrator. Each one has a placard that gives the vital statistics for that character. Right now, well now it's running on a battery pack, but it could also run on a small transformer uh, wall plug. So I'll talk about how to design and make this in this episode. The power is going to run up the center between the boxes. It's basically a tongue and groove design where there's two rails or tongues on the left hand boxes and a large groove on the right hand and both of them have two runs of copper tape, positive to the front, negative to the rear. And I have to be careful to leave the areas clear where the wires are soldered or the boxes won't fit close together. My only references for the design is a box the size of a character and the Gloomhaven logo. I decided the poor Richard font was the best match for that. This is the back of the box. This is how the character fits in on a small platform. This is the drop ceiling that'll hold the light. And here's the top and there's a space above it so the box above will fit snugly down inside. My basic construction techniques you can find in my scale model videos. I always do side and top views of every piece because then I use those to lay out the next piece like this uh, bottom. The painted panel is a separate panel that's inserted into the back of the box so that makes it easy to work on. I'm going to glue this panel on the bottom of the box and that'll fit snugly into the box below it. The top is just like the bottom. This is the drop ceiling. It's got a hole for my little spotlight and because I want it angled backwards I'm going to cut these washers and I'll put one of them in the front. You'll see how that works and I'll keep the light tipped to the back. I'm going to glue parts to the side of the box that hold the copper tape. You can see the holes here where the wires will run through and I need to cut the parts that I'm going to glue on the box sides to make them fit together. The black are the wooden rails, the copper tape runs all the way to the top and bottom and the beige are the panels that are glued on the other box and create a groove. I found out I didn't need those center beige panels. I could just leave one large groove open. And because of the staggered design, I have to make sure the space is here for the soldered wires on the next box. The back panel designs are based on the uh, symbols used for the different types of characters. And I used the pen tool and image trace to create these. And there's also this motif that's either a scale or feathered frame and I created that by doing a special brush and then just applying it to a circle and I created a frame that looks like the backs of a lot of the cards. I engraved the information that I wanted for each character on a small front panel that hides the lights and I laid out the base by putting the outline of uh, two boxes in and the green represents the overlap of those side panels and then I made the base just bigger than that so that they'd be held tightly together. I set up my staggered tiering by creating a half box. I put a hole in the back for the cord to run out and I put the name of the party on the front and that sets up the staggered design. When I first tested the light, first I made sure that my battery pack would run it properly and then I tried to see where the light would work best. My first design had it in the middle of the ceiling that wasn't good. It needed to be to the front and tipped to the back. This is all cut out of 8th inch 
plywood, and that unfortunately was a little too low for my laser to focus properly, so I had to stack two sheets together, and that gave me some smoke burn on the back. Also, when I engrave, I put masking tape over the front, and that eliminates smoke on the front. I painted all the interior sides of the box white so it would reflect light, and you can see the washer here that is glued in place and painted over that's going to tip the light to the rear. I used the same Citadel paints I used for painting the miniatures uh, on the back. I bought six of these LED spotlights for $22 on Amazon. Each comes with its own little transformer, but I don't need that because I'm going to be using a battery pack. I cut the clip off the end and I uh, separated the two wires that had been held in a single sheath and my light is ready to go. You bend those clips back, you install it from the front and then the clips hold it tight against the ceiling. That tiny little tip to the back makes a big difference in the lighting. I glued on the wooden rails, put the copper tape on top to bottom and also copper tape in the same locations inside the large groove on the other side. I glued the panel that goes on the bottom of the box in place before I assembled the box and set it aside to dry. The top and the ceiling go in with tabs. They aren't even actually glued in place. I just put them in and then I glue the sides around. I always use these granite samples to help me hold things while they dry. And the final part is to put the bottom on. I leave the front panel off until all of the wiring is done. I bend the wires to at a right angle. I use foam tape to hold them in place and then I just solder them. It's very easy. To attach the battery pack, I use my little helping hands to uh, solder the wires together. I slide the shrink tube over, heat the tube, and it's done. I found that my tongue and groove design worked, but I got a much better connection if I put a binder clip to hold them together. So I painted these white binder clips so that they would have brown on the end and maintain the white on the sides and that way when I put them in place uh, they kind of faded into the background. I kind of like the MacGyverness of this. I did the painted backs but one design option would be to cut an acrylic mirror and put it in the back and even the side panels so that you could see the figure better. I did this to show off individual Gloomhaven characters but you could make bigger boxes and show off uh, groups of miniatures as well. I have lots of other projects I'm working on for gaming and gamers, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.